basically tonight's topic is I didn't think of a good catchy title for it. It's basically, you know how you talk to people and they're like, well, Jesus could come back in a thousand years. You guys have all heard that, right? I've heard that from like other Christians. I've even heard it from people in Calvary. Jesus could come back in a thousand years. And I always say, I could be a long time, but if it is, it's going to be extremely painful and we probably won't be here anyways. So tonight we're going to kind of go over that topic. Like how, how do we know that Jesus is coming back like right now? How do we know it's not going to be in, you know, 50 years or what have you? So that's basically what we're going to do tonight. We're going to tackle that topic since I think it's a pretty important topic because we want to start with the doctrine of imminency. Uh, all the apostles, all the New Testament writers held to the doctrine of imminency, which means they believed that Jesus could come back at any time. You see it all throughout the writings of the New Testament. And I don't think that's by chance. God wants us to live with the expectation that Jesus Christ could be coming back at any time. Why? To trick us. No, no, because it affects the way we live our lives, right? I use the example of like parents. You guys get it. If you tell your kids, I'll be back in a couple weeks, right? How are the kids going to behave while you're gone? But if you say, mommy and daddy will be back soon, then the kids are going to behave differently. And Jesus, God, he wants us to behave with an urgency, with a sense of expectation. He doesn't want us to just act like, oh, it's no big deal. He even gives us a parable about this, right? The parable of the, uh, is it the unjust steward? No, that's the one where he settles his master's account. I can't remember. It's one of the ones about the stewards. I don't know what they titled it, but remember he thinks his master's coming back in a long time. So he's beating his servants, his fellow servants, getting drunk, doing all these kinds of things. And God doesn't want us to live our Christian lives like that. He wants us to live on fire lives for him, completely sold out for him. So tonight we're going to go over the evidence and the Bible passages that relate to this kind of evidence that we're going to be going over. And I hope it'll A, encourage you guys and B, uh, be useful. So you can share this video because I really actually made this video to send to a couple people because we're talking to some of my buddies like, I need to make a video about this. So that's what we're going to do tonight. So we're going to go over a couple different articles, uh, groups of articles, and I'm going to try to make it into two different videos. One of them covering technology and the other one covering all the other related topics that point to the fact that we're living in the last days. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. I think, sweet, it's already up there. All right, so the first topic we're going to be covering is all the other topics that are not related to technology, and then we'll tackle technology next. So this is going to be covering everything from Israel to aliens to uh, the technology related to the mark, all these kinds of things. So we're going to be going over a couple verses and then we're going to cover some news articles. So we're going to begin here in Matthew chapter 25 and uh, verses 1 through 6. And it's Jesus and he gives us the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. And you guys are all probably familiar with this. But basically you've got these, these, this group of virgins and they're waiting with the bride. So these are not all, <laughs> this is not Mormonism. These are not plural wives. These are the girls hanging out with the, with the bride. And they're going to wait till the bridegroom, bridegroom comes and carries her away and they get married. You guys probably figured that though. So basically, we've all been to like a slumber party, right? When you're younger and everybody's got a lot of energy at like six or seven o'clock, right? And then eight o'clock rolls around and it's a little calmer. Nine o'clock, same thing. Ten o'clock, maybe one of your friends falls asleep, right? And then you color on their face with the Sharpie or whatever. By the time midnight rolls around, you know, especially back then when they didn't have electricity, so they went down when the sun went down, they, you know, they, they're not as exciting, right? So by the time midnight rolls around, they're all sleeping. And this is a model for us of what it's going to be like when the bridegroom, Jesus, comes for his bride, the church. What do we see? They're all sleeping. What do we see right now? The church is asleep at the wheel. 20, 30 years ago, I was talking to some dear saints that, um, that go here. You guys might know them. And they've been they're, uh, in their 80s, I think it is, late 70s, 80s. And they've been part of Calvary Chapel for decades. And I, was, I have too. So I was talking to them and I was like, 
did you guys notice how it was so much more, there was so much more excitement and anticipation for the rapture 20, 30 years ago? And they're like, yeah, it was, you know, it was exciting. We're like, Jesus is coming back. Just like you see in the Bible where they're like, Jesus is coming back. But now it's like this weird, this weird mentality. We call it rapture fatigue has crept over the church where everybody's like, yeah, you know, he's coming back. Yeah. But then they're not excited about it. They're not like, awesome, Jesus is coming back. But we're supposed to have that mentality. We don't want to be asleep, even though Jesus tells us here in this parable that we'll be asleep. And that's what we see looking around the world today. The church is totally asleep at the wheel. Uh, next slide, please. So the next thing we're going to cover is John chapter 3, where we have Nicodemus come talk to Jesus. And there's a little thing here that most people miss. And that's verse two. Look what he says. Look what Nicodemus says. He says, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher come from God. Who is he talking about when he says we? Who's Nicodemus? He's a Pharisee. Jesus calls him the teacher of Israel. So this dude was high up in the teaching echelon. I can never say that word. High up in the teaching structure. It sounds like he was probably the chief teaching rabbi. He wasn't the chief priest or what have you. He was just the guy that would probably go in and open up the Torah in the temple when they were, you know, in the outer court or whatever, when they were talking to the people doing that kind of thing. And Jesus is talking to him and he gives him, you know, John 3, 16 and all these verses that we love so much. And he says to him this interesting thing. He says to Jesus, we know that you're a teacher come from God. Church, was that the official position of the Pharisees? Were they public with that? Were they like, yeah, Jesus is from God? No, this is weird, right? But that's a thing we even see today. What do I mean? Well, take a look at the next slide. This one, an article from Charisma News. And this article came out a couple, uh, what was it? About a year ago, I think it was. It says, major uh, majority of pastors see signs of end times in current events, according to a study. That's interesting. Why? Because we're not hearing that, are we? Do you guys hear all the churches like, hey, Jesus is coming back right now? Not so much. I don't hear that at all. Very few churches are talking about this kind of stuff. And the ones that do are usually getting it from every side from the other churches that aren't. They're like, well, you're being a little hasty, you know, talking about this kind of stuff. But here we are. We see it right here. The majority of pastors see this. And they know what's going on. They're like, yeah, this looks like the end times are lining up right now. But is that what we're hearing being telegraphed from the pulpits? Not so much. Not so much. Next uh, slide, please. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 8. And it's Paul speaking. And he says, for if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who will prepare for battle? Right now, that's what's going on. The pulpits are making an uncertain sound. And are the Christians preparing themselves for the coming of Jesus Christ? Not so much. Not so much. I, you know, it's tragic because I see guys that I know and respect and love. And, and, you know, some of these guys are planning building projects that will take, you know, many years to do and cost millions of dollars. If we really believe Jesus is it right here coming back really soon. Would we be planning like multi-year building projects that cost millions of dollars? Or would you rather send your millions of dollars into the mission field or something like that? And I'm not saying, you know, don't occupy till he comes. Obviously, occupy till he comes. But man, I'm telling you what, if I had that problem, you know, and maybe we will one day. But we're only, you know, we've been open for four months. So we might have to cross that bridge. But what we're going to do is buy a piece of property and put up a couple steel buildings that are comfortable and fine and work, right? We don't have to have like massive edifices, right? That's the heart behind that. Like, what are we doing? And so here we see this interesting phrase from, from Paul. He says, if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who will prepare for battle? And not a lot of people are preparing for Jesus coming back because they're getting mixed messages from the pulpits. Even though the pastors themselves, when they're asked, when they're pulled, say, oh yeah, we see the signs of Jesus coming back. Uh, next slide, please. This is Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, and it says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him, Jesus Christ, to show his servants things which must shortly take place. 
and he sent and signified it, signified it, technically, if you want to look at the Greek, by his angel to his servant, John. So in this passage, we want to look at that term right there in the middle, shortly. Now, when we look at that word in the Greek, we see an interesting thing. Next slide, please. It's a, a form of the root word taku. I think it's taku, I think is how you pronounce it. And if you look at what it says, if you look down there, right, right about the middle, where it says uh, 5035, right in the middle of the page, notice what it says there. It says, does not mean immediately or necessarily in a very short time, but rather without any delay. And this is where the root word from we get the word tachometer, and it's talking about frequency. So if you want to get the idea of what this word's being talked about in the Greek here, it's not saying all this stuff is going to happen right after I, John, write these words. It's saying once this stuff begins, it's not going to stop. And that's exactly what we see Jesus compare it to. What does Jesus compare it to? A childbirth. Ladies, can you stop a childbirth once your labor starts? Are you like, oh, I use the example of my wife with our first child because that's always the one you remember the most, right? Well, the second one was the same thing. With our first child, my wife was trying to cut a chili pepper and it took her like an hour. And I'm like, honey, I think this is the real deal because she couldn't cut the chili pepper. It was just like she would be cutting and she'd be like, ah, like. <laughs> and, and the second time she was like trying to clean a window and it took her like a half an hour to clean like a little tiny mirror. And I was just like, honey, I think this, I think this might be baby. You know, when it starts, you're not putting the plug back in. You can't be like, oh, wait, we're at dinner. Can you, you know, can you wait a little bit, honey? You guys are laughing because you know what I mean? It's, it's not how that works. It's not how that works at all. And now that my wife's pregnant, we're wondering what she's going to be <clears throat> doing when probably taking care of one of the kids. Or I will probably be taking care of the kids at that point. Uh, next slide, please. So here it is where Jesus compares this, this whole end of the world scenario to a childbirth. It's that last verse right there where he goes over all these things that we've talked about so many times. We've made videos covering these topics. If you want to go look at our videos, you can find them. And it says, all these things, verse 8, are the beginning of sorrows. And there, when you look at the Greek, it's talking about birth pangs. Jesus compares it to a birth. And when a birth starts, it doesn't just magically stop. Uh, next article, please. So now we're going to get into the articles themselves. What do we see that shows us that we are in the beginning of sorrows? I came out publicly a year and a half ago uh, in, I think it was, I think I told our church, the first church we started in Buffalo, New York. Hi, Calvary Chapel, North Towns. I know a bunch of them are watching. Uh, I told them in March that I thought this was the beginning of sorrows. And a couple people were like, you're insane. And I just, I don't know why, but I really, I was convinced when I was just looking at everything at that point, it really, the dominoes hadn't started falling, but you know, when you see the dominoes set up and they're going around the whole room, like 50 times up staircases, you're like this, there's something weird going on here. And so I came out publicly and I was like, I think this is the beginning of sorrows and I got some heat for it. And then everything started happening. And I actually, we saw it coming. I told our church, <laughs> it must have sounded so psychotic. I think it was January. I told our church, we're going to be shutting down soon and going online. And they're like, huh? You know, like, what are you talking? It was, it was barely a thing even in China. I was like, I was watching them tear up 15 lane freeways and weld doors closed. I was like, oh yeah, this is what they've been planning. Here we go. So we got out in front of that and bought all the equipment before it all went through the roof and everything. We were able to just seamlessly transition to online and everything. But we saw all that coming. And so I was like, hey, I think we're here. And now all this stuff has happened. I would say probably 95% of the articles, 90% of the articles we're going to be covering tonight have all happened since I said that, which is crazy because let's well, just look at this one. This is from the Carnegie Endowment. And it says, how Israel and the Arab world are making peace without a peace deal. This is exactly what the Bible described for this scenario where it gives us basically teams. And it says on one side, you're going to have Israel completely by itself. And on the other side, you're going to have Russia, Iran, uh, Turkey, Syria, in all the non-Arab Muslim nations in a military alliance against Israel. And what do we see? Now it's all perfectly lining up, whereas before, this wasn't the case. And all the Calvary Chapel guys who were, you know, prophecy experts going back decades, 
They've all said it was going to happen like this when it was the exact opposite and everyone thought they were crazy. They're like, nope, it's going to change. I know it's this way right now, but it's all going to change. And it's, it has. Now it's all lined up perfectly. And exactly what we see going on is exactly what the Bible described. Uh, next article, please. Jerusalem Post. Iran, Russia, and Turkey signal growing alliance. And Syria, well, that's where Russia's biggest military base is outside of Russia. Huh. Interesting. Next article, please. This is also one from Jerusalem Post. Yep, same one. Uh, Turkey vows to liberate Al-Aqsa after churning Hagia Sophia into a mosque. What is Al-Aqsa? That is the Golden Dome, the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And you've heard of the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade. This is a, a shot across the bow. This is a big announcement. He's basically saying he's going to go conquer Jerusalem. This should give us goosebumps, guys. This is crazy stuff. And we're like, wow, here it is. If they do that, we just saw Iran and Russia have a military alliance with them. And you better believe all the non-Arab Muslim nations, exactly like the Bible says in Ezekiel 38, are going to join in on that battle. And now we just saw another very interesting development. Next article, please. The Saudis sign a military cooperation agreement. This is not an alliance, so they're not allies, so they won't be in the battle. Now they'll just sit on the sidelines and say, have you gone to come and take spoil? Exactly out of Ezekiel 38, guys. This is so insane. We could be like raptured right now. What is going on? This is so crazy. Now, let's put it in the context of what we're talking about. None of this has ever happened before. And now all of this just happened right now. Yeah, I guess it could be in a thousand years. I don't know. I think one of the most convincing things we're going to see tonight is that you basically have to have so much more faith to believe that all of this is just magically happening than to believe it's exactly what the Bible described and we're at that time. At some point, it just becomes so overwhelming that you're just like, it takes way more faith to believe this is all a coincidence than it does to just look at it and be like, well, here it is. And that's what we see going on. This just came out in the last week, guys, exactly falling into place. Because the Bible says that Saudi Arabia, and it sounds like maybe America, sit on the sidelines and saying, what are you doing? But they don't do anything. They say, what are you doing? Have you gone to take spoil? Spoil, what do you mean? Well, they discovered the Golan Heights, which Israel now holds, has over a trillion dollars worth of natural gas with a T. That's a lot of money. And what are they going to do? Well, the international community says that that land doesn't belong to Israel. I think God disagrees, reading the Bible very clearly. So uh, God's going to get involved in that war. It's not going to go very well for them at all. Uh, next article, please. Here's an interesting one. Israeli rabbi says he's already holding meetings with the Messiah. I'm sure that's just a coincidence. Nothing to see here. Church, is that Jesus? No, that's Antichrist. Interesting to see this kind of stuff just popping up on the news, huh? Oh, by the way, this is the most well-known. This guy's legendary in Israel. But there's actually, I think this is Kedurah, there's actually a, almost a half dozen other rabbis who say that they're meeting with the Messiah or that he's visited them. They're afraid to leave the country because Messiah is going to announce himself imminently. Just really weird stuff. Like, all right, that's kind of interesting. Next article, please. And then if that wasn't, you know, incredible enough in the Middle East, we've got this. The prime minister, one of them, there's this weird shit power sharing agreement, but uh, it says, yeah, Iran is 10 weeks from breakout to a nuclear weapon. Translation, in 10 weeks, uh, sorry, this is now three weeks, in eight weeks or seven weeks, they won't be able to stop Iran. They're going to cross that point of no return where they won't be able to stop Iran from getting a nuke. Next article, please. Israel says it's not going to let that happen. This is so crazy. This is AP. This is not like some conspiracy theory website. They're straight up saying, we're not going to let them get the nuke. Does that mean we're going to see some major escalation or war within the next two months? If they can't do it through a cyber attack, cyber attack or uh, assassinations, yes. But don't put it past Mossad to try to do some crazy cyber attack or some crazy assassination uh, plot. I fully expect to see definitely something like that in the next coming weeks. The, the question is, what will the response be, right? Definitely things are 
at a place where they've never been before. Uh, next article, please. This is the Jewish Star. It says, it says, record number of Jews seek to return home. Bible says that'll happen right at the end of time. Church, is that going to happen again in 50 years? That's kind of tricky because they would have to leave to come back. <laughs> so so this is, these are limiting factors. At some point, you've got to be like, yeah, everything's in place. I guess it could kind of move out of place and then move back into place. Doesn't sound like any childbirth I've ever seen. Uh, next article, please. This is from futurism.com. It says, leaked United Nations climate report. The apocalypse is almost here. That's interesting. What do we see in the book of Revelation, the book of the apocalypse? Earth changes. So do we see all these crazy climate catastrophes? Well, in the past couple of years, we've started to see them, right? That's because of, well, I'm not going to get into it. I'll just sound too crazy. But that's weather modification. That's geoengineering, which they've already talked about publicly doing. And I think they've been doing for quite a few, uh, probably about two decades now. It seems like they started a geoengineering program. And uh, that's why you see on one side of the world's jet stream, crazy droughts. And on the other side of the world's jet stream downstream, crazy floods. Because, yeah, you can prevent that rain from falling. That technology is, by the way, started in 1892. It's not new technology. But there's consequences downstream if you use those technologies. And so, yeah, they're saying the worst is yet to come, affecting our children's and grandchildren's lives much more than our own. Next article, please. Here's another one. Code Red. This is USA Today. USA Today saying this. Code Red for Humanity. United Nations report gives stark warning on climate change, says wild weather events will worsen. Yeah, I agree. I've read the Bible. The sun starts to burn men. It's going to get a lot crazier. We're going to see things get real crazy. And, you know, I actually made <clears throat> a video about this on our YouTube channel, and it's called Aliens, the Rapture, and Global Warming. You're like, what? <laughs> this is the weirdest. You're like, yeah, what LSD are you on? Well, no, because I, I, this came to me a long time ago, that they were planning on trying to co co coalesce, correlate all these things together, because what a better excuse than to blame the Christians, who are the world's biggest polluters, right? If you watch the TV and... Let's, let's be honest, we've all seen some of our dumb friends who are like, oh, the world's going to burn and throw their trash on the ground. I always punched my friends when they did that kind of stupid stuff. But some people do have that mentality, guys. That's, that's not fake. That's, there's, there's some truth to that. And what would be a better excuse than for the, the aliens, quote unquote, to come back right after the rapture and say, oh, we took the bad people off of the earth and the children. We took the children because it's going to be so bad with all the earth changes that we had to protect the children. It would inoculate the culture against this whole mentality of, oh, well, this was the rapture. Because then right after that, what happens? All these earth changes begin. They would look like geniuses. And of course, you can watch that video where I make the case for that. But it's not as crazy as it sounds. Next article, please. Uh, volcanic activity is heating up around the world. More than 39 erupting volcanoes and hundreds of earthquakes hitting near or under lava craters. It's increasing around the world. Very interesting. And I know this sounds conspiratorial, but we actually have the technology to be able to do that using satellites now where we can superheat underwater uh, pools using uh, different technologies that we have and cause earthquakes. That's old technology too. I know that sounds crazy, but once we start going over the technology in uh, the next video we're going to do, you're going to be like, wow, we probably do have that technology. Yeah, it's declassified. I know that sounds crazy, but it's, I don't know what to say. Uh, next article, please. The European Space Agency moves forward with Hera planetary defense mission. No, this is not a Bruce Willis movie. This is real. Right out of the book of Revelation, when it says comets and asteroids or what have you start to strike the Earth, Satan doesn't want his party interrupted. He knows he's about to have his five minutes of fame, and he's trying to put the brakes on God's plan to intervene. Not just one. Take a look at the next article. Here's another one. Latvian lab developing device to help Earth dodge asteroids. Next article, please. How NASA's DART mission aims to crash an unmanned spacecraft against an asteroid in defensive test. Isn't this weird that all around the world they're getting ready for asteroids and comets? Like, why are they... This, guys, this is billions of dollars they're spending on this stuff. This isn't just like pie in the sky kind of thing. They're planning this. <laughs> what are they not telling us? Uh, next article, please. Aliens could 
attack Earth to end global warming? What is this, InfoWars? Oh, wait, Fox News, huh, okay. Yeah, huh. All right, we're just going to act like we didn't see that one. Next article, please. Obama, proof of aliens will lead to new religions and massive military spending. And then if you look at what he says in that interview, he says, I can't talk about everything I know. There's some things I just can't talk about. Then we read the book of Revelation. What do we see in Revelation? We see a world that doesn't believe in God go to physical war against God. We see a world that doesn't believe in the devil worship the devil. What? what? All right. Back up. Can you go to physical war against the spirit? This isn't Ghostbusters. What are they going to be out there with their ectoplasma beams? Like, we got him, rope him in. I don't, even, I don't even know what to say. It's so ridiculous, right? But they're doing this. The only way this makes sense, guys, is if they convince the world that the, the Christians worship Elohim. That's one of the names in the Old Testament. It's a plural. It's not a plural because it's the Trinity. They'll say it's a plural because it's an alien species. And the good aliens are the reptilians who gave us fire and led us out of the caves and tried to initiate us into a higher level of consciousness. And those bad Elohim, they were saying stone the homosexuals and stone disobedient children. Do you see how the world's getting ready for this? It's all coming together. And then you got Obama saying it's going to lead to new religions. I totally agree with him for once. I think he actually is pretty much correct here. And massive military spending it makes you wonder why they're doing all this stuff, this stuff we see at CERN, where they're trying to create like antimatter weapons. Next article, please. Military.com, spike in UFO sightings across the nation. Next article, please. Uh, this one's from the Metro, uh, one of the biggest tabloid papers in, uh, in England. It says, Former Israeli space chief says aliens exist and humanity isn't ready. It's like the leader of the Israeli CIA coming out and saying this, guys. That's, that's a weird thing to say. Next article, please. As if that wasn't enough, here's our own CIA director coming out and saying some absolutely bizarre things. And if you read this, this is John Brennan, the most woke... I shouldn't say anything. He'll come to my house and kill me. So I love you, John Brennan. Um... He says, but I think some of the phenomenon we're going to be seeing continues to be unexplained and might, in fact, be some type of phenomenon that is the result of something that we don't yet understand and that could involve some type of activity that some might say constitutes a different form of life. Have you ever heard anything more equivocating than that? That was like written by a lawyer, right? He's like, sometimes maybe possibly could be considered maybe, sort of. Because he knows it's not normal life, he knows it's interdimensional. And when you look at the character, you guys remember Close Encounters of the Third Kind? There was the French character in the movie, Steven Spielberg's movie. And that French character was based upon the real person, Jacques Vallée. We, we pronounce it Vallée, but it's Jacques Vallée. And he's this expert, and he's not a Catholic, not a Christian, nothing like that. And he studied this. He's the foremost expert. Even the U.S. government hired him for projects that are now public, that were secret. And he says... These things are not space aliens, and they're not your friend. He says they're interdimensional, and they are exactly what we think of in history as demons. That's what this guy says. I agree with this guy. I think he nailed it. And I think John Brennan is very interesting in what he says here. But go read this article for yourselves. Just type in John O. Brennan on UFOs. Very interesting article how he says it's kind of alive. <laughs> interesting. It makes you think of the, the Nephilim, how they were dead. Well, we won't get into all that, but <clears throat> next article, please. The new American religion of UFOs. So this one says belief in aliens is like faith in religion and may come to replace it. Awkward. What did they know? I totally agree, by the way. I think they're right. I think it will. I think that's what the lie that we see Paul discuss after the rapture. He says the lie. It's, it's a specific, if you look at the Greek, it's a specific lie. And, what, and it says, everyone who does not love the truth but takes pleasure in the lie will believe in the lie. I think that's what we're going to be seeing right after the rapture. It'll explain everything. Next article, please. Reuters, biggest news source in the world. Vatican scientist says belief in God and aliens is okay. 
<laughs> as he plays with his Lucifer telescope. I know it sounds fake. Look it up. Can't make this stuff up. Uh, next article, please. Vatican astronomer says, if aliens exist, they might not need redemption. <laughs> Stop laughing, guys. I know it's so insane, right? It's, but are they holy then? Like, should we worship them? He's like, yeah. yeah. Uh, next, <laughs> next article, please. Daily Mail. This is the, one of the biggest papers in Europe. And it says, Pope Francis denied the physical resurrection of Christ, says his close friend. Um, next article, please. A confidant says, Pope Francis denies Jesus' divinity. Where is his indignant reputation? If somebody said that about me, oh my gosh, I would be like shouting from the rooftops that that is a lie, right? Pope Francis is just like, <laughs> uh, next article, please. The Guardian, one of the biggest papers in Europe. Vatican scrambles after Pope appears to deny existence of hell while smoking a joint in the garden. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Would it even surprise you? <laughs> Pope comes out as tranny. You're just like, yeah. <laughs> Next article, please. Pope asks all religions to unite with him spiritually and beg God to overcome. Wait, what? Cares about all that. People need Jesus, man. Yeah. Question. I guess this could all be a coincidence, too, that now we have this Pope who would love to be the false prophet of Revelation. I guess it could move back to a conservative Pope, and maybe we'll get another character that looks like the false prophet from Revelation. Or we might just be at the end of the world, huh? Next article, please. Uh, world Economic Forum website. Love your neighbor. Islam, Judaism, and Christianity come together. Aw, so cute. Next article, please. Look at this one. This is very interesting. WesternJournal.com. George Soros announces revolutionary moment is here and says we can now accomplish the inconceivable. And that's exactly what we're seeing. This came out one year ago. And look how crazy things have gone in the past year, guys. Things have just gone into overdrive, right? And that was their plan. Like they were waiting for this moment. Next article, please. Jesus says, you're like, what on earth? How did that get in there? No, hear me out. I know this sounds insane. Jesus says it'll be as in the days of Noah. God has a huge sense of humor, guys. He's like, I made it pretty easy for you. What's the most popular baby name for the last 10 years? Noah. You can't make this up. God has such a sense of humor. He's so funny. He's like the original troll. He's just like, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, literally, I'm not kidding. This is real. This is the most popular baby name. And by the way, it's all over the whole Western world, all the world, not just English speaking countries, Noah. That's kind of weird. I don't know. All right. Next article. Uh, coming soon, America's own social credit score system. Wow. You know what? I know that sounds like a blast, right? That sounds exactly what we see, like exactly what we see in Revelation 13, where if you don't play ball, you're blacklisted, right? You can't do anything. And now we see this system taking hold here. They already have this in China. Church, if you go to a church like this in China, well, you probably end up in a camp where they'll harvest your organs. But if you made it past that stage, they would not let you go on a high-speed train, fly in an airplane, let your kids go to college, let you go to restaurants, let you do anything. You are an unwelcome person in society because the social credit score system, that's real and it's not new. That's about 10 years old in the most advanced stages where we see it now. And you can look that up. I know that sounds absolutely insane. It's real. And now it's coming here. And oh, by the way, the same companies that uh, are kicking us off of social media and all these things and blacklisting our search results, they're the same companies who are going to be administering this. I'm sure that'll go swimmingly well for us. Uh, next article, please. And that's interesting that right on time, we see that where that's a technology that could easily morph into that mark technology. Uh, here's an interesting one from CNBC. As China leaps ahead on digital currency, a top central bank group is calling for global, global, not regional, global cooperation. Next article, please. Fed chair says 80% of the global central banks are considering digital currencies right now. Next article, please. And they aren't just considering. Here's a chart. And if you look at all the colored countries that have different colors, those are all in different stages of developing a digital currency right now. Those are all the world's top economies. 
They're all working on it right now. And some of them, like China, for instance, have brought their currency online, the digital renminbi. Uh, next article, please. Forbes, Visa applies for digital dollar blockchain patent. They actually have created a physical device. You can look at the patent documents where you feed in bills. It scans the serial number on the bills, digitizes the value to the blockchain and destroys the bill. We're here, guys. This is it. We're here. <laughs> I'm sure that's nothing to do with Jesus coming back. <laughs> Next article, please. Words I can't read. I'll still delete our video. As <laughs> passports morph into digital IDs, privacy advocates want to know that user data is protected. And that picture they show right there is the Excelsior Pass. They're using that in New York State right now. You can't do much in New York City without that, guys. And by much, I mean like not much at all, like almost nothing. You're a non-person. And do you see how this is going to merge with the so, uh, social credit score system? This is like the baby version of the Mark. This is Mark Jr. right here. Next, our, Mark Jr. Some guy's watching this name, Mark Jr. And he's like, hey, man. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Next article, please. Scientific American, which is neither scientific nor American. Invisible ink could reveal whether kids have been, you know what? Interesting. Into a child's skin. Next article, please. In Israel, this is Wall Street Journal. In Israel, being fully, uh, you know what, now means not two, but three. Now you got to get another one, and then another one, and then another one. They got them on the hamster wheel. I tried to tell people this is how it's going to go. And I do know a few people that either I did not know at the time when they got it or that against their better judgment did it anyways. And every single person that I've talked to is now like, uh, I've, I've asked them, was like, you going to get the next one? They're like, uh-uh. So they're going to have to make these mandatory because now the next numbers are going to be even lower. Nobody wants to get on this never-ending hamster wheel. Sign me up. Uh, next article, please. Uh, Europe, Euronews.com. It says, Will, I can't read those two words. I know everybody else can. I can't. They take down my videos. I know it sounds crazy, guys, but they do. So everybody else can read these words, but not our channel. Sorry. Will those things be the next big thing in Europe? Yeah, of course they will. Because the Europeans, they gave away their guns, silly rabbits. Don't do that. And also you see like in Australia, they could do whatever they want to you. That's why they don't like the guns here in America. And that's why we're probably going to have some big false flag events coming up soon that they'll blame on people like us from these thousands of Afghanis that are coming over now. I'm sure they're all, you know... 18 to 30 year old, well-behaved young men. There's definitely no bad people in those groups that would do false flag attacks and blame Christians or Trump supporters. That's crazy talk. Next article, please. Biometricupdate.com. This is like an industry newspaper. It says, ID2020 and partners launch program to provide digital identification with those. That's weird. Just like the Bible says, where it all merges together. There's this system and the people are like, who can make war with the beast? You can't do anything. You can't buy or sell if you don't get this mark in the future. And now we can see how all that's kind of on the horizon now. Next article, please. This is South China Morning Post, which is an official mouthpiece for the Chinese government. This is Yahoo News reprinting their article. It says, Pentagon uh, team reveals... Uh, that detecting chip, I can't say those words. We're just on the awesomest list ever. I don't know how you even get on this list. I used to be able to talk about everything when Trump was in office, but then Biden got in and now the tech services just do whatever they want. We used to be able to talk about everything. I can't even say that other word. Read it for yourselves, guys. Here it is. Uh, DARPA. This is DARPA. DARPA invented the internet. These people aren't slouches. These people know what they're doing. And you read it and it's the weirdest thing ever. They said they were working on this before Oh, that's kind of weird. Next article, please. Military, this is uh, 60 Minutes, CBS News. Military programs aiming to end forever. These chips. I wonder if I can say that. And salsa. That might fool them. It could. It's pretty dumb right now. I don't think they're monitoring the people. They're just using keyword scanning. We love guacamole here. It's... Uh, next article, please. 
This is France 24. That's pretty much the biggest news site in France. And it says, uh, gene editing blocks uh, that transmission in human cells. Yeah, they're talking about CRISPR-Cas9, guys, which is such a crazy experimental technology right now. Oh my gosh, can you imagine how insane they are that they think we're going to get the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing to not get sick? I'll take my chances, man. Yeah, absolutely insane. Go find this article and read it. CRISPR-Cas9 is so insane, you can cut parts of your genome out, but you don't know what other things those parts of your genome do. It's like there's just one section that controls if your nose runs. You, you know, you, you do that and you come out without feet. And you're like, oh, I guess there was something else in that genome. We didn't know what it did. They have no idea what the genome is right now. They've decoded it, but it's literally like a kid with a can of gasoline and a lighter just running around. They have no idea what they're doing. Terrifying. Uh, next article, please. SeattleTimes.com. Using dust and DNA to trace products all the way back to the factory church. Can you imagine? Remember the um, Left Behind movies? Where it's like the people are like hiding in the forest. They're like, we have an underground economy. We're hiding from Antichrist. Yeah, no. No, 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 no. We're going into like a Terminator future where they find your stuff and they're like, all right, do a live scan. They just put, take a swab and put it in a machine that some 18-year-old kid's holding. He's like, yeah, they got this at the Kroger on... You know, they, they know right where you bought it. Like, there's no fighting what's coming, guys. And do you see why you, a rapture becomes necessary? Because who could make war with the beast? And it's so sad. I've talked to friends about this before. God's awesome, and he knows what he's doing. And I can never make this judgment call. But imagine, the longer he waits, the more people get saved and are part of the church age. That's beautiful. But also, the quicker the people that come to Christ after the rapture get mopped up. So it's kind of like this... Perfect. And God knows where to let it, you know, where to pull the plug and to end the church age. So we just got to trust him on that one, right? But it's absolutely insane to see how quick it's going. And that's nothing. Look at this next article right here. Next article, please. Forbes. How Internet of Things, AI, and blockchain can transform supply chains in three steps. You read this article and they say that very in very short order, they'll be able to use the Internet of Things. They're saying that they're going to find within a couple of years, they'll be able to take each individual coffee bean and tell you where it came from. Each piece of salmon in the store and tell you which farm it came from, which fish it was part of. Imagine where we're going right now. There is no fighting what's coming. People are so confused. So confused. These people that think we go through the tribulation. No, we don't, man. Well, yeah, we do. It's just we'll be up in heaven eating the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. Uh, next article, please. This is interesting. So here's the original version from MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And it says, storing medical information below the skin surface. Specialized dye delivered along with a, you know what, could enable on patient storage of information. That's really scary. That's really close to home, huh? And you look at the next version, next article, please. Here's the edited version. They're like, they just basically added this to save lives in regions where paper or digital records weren't available. Where is paper not available on earth? What? They're like, we don't have digital records here. It's so patronizing too, because it's like, that's really insulting to the people that live in the third world. They're like, we have cell phones. What are you talking about, dude? It's so patronizing. And then they actually added an editor's note at the bottom. It's like, this article has been updated to clarify. Because we all started showing, everybody started showing this article and they had to like add this like, no, it's not for you, silly. Uh, next article, please. Here it is, Smithsonian. This spiky patch could invisibly record history. I have to take that out, sorry. Uh, under your skin. But the technology raises several ethical concerns that could stymie its progress. Well, let's talk about its progress. Next article, please. Who created it? Oh, look at the second circle. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Huh, look at the first circle that can reveal private information. Look at the third article. The goal is widespread adoption. And look at the final one, tattoo, mark. What, what, wait, what? Huh, I, it could be a thousand years, guys, all right? A thousand years. Next article, please. Ah, what chemical does it use to fluoresce under ultraviolet light? 
a chemical just coincidentally called luciferase. I'm sure that's just a total coincidence that it's named after Lucifer and all. Nothing to see here. And it's, if I, I should have pulled the Wayback Machine on this article too. Uh, see at the very, um, see at the right below the name, it says for a non-carbon technology, see quantum dot subcutaneous record keeping. They had those articles merged until we kept sending people here. Then they separated them and completely removed all the information about the one from the other and separated them completely. But that's what the quantum dot microneedles use, luciferase. And they called it, you just read it, Bill Gates developed it, and they call it a mark or a tattoo whose goal is widespread adoption. I'm sure this is all totally harmless and not in, at all nefarious. Uh, next article, please. This is for patent 2020, that's the year. 060606. It's a cryptocurrency system using body activity data. Church, this makes it so you get paid through the blockchain by doing some physical activity. I'm guessing, because I've read the Bible, it's going to be physically bowing down to the image of the beast or saying that you worship the beast. And if you do one of those two things, you get paid through the blockchain. I'm guessing what will be the leftover treasure from the rapture because there's going to be a lot of money on the table. You want your piece of the pie? All you got to do is worship the beast. Guess who patented this? You can see it right there on the left-hand side, second from the bottom. Microsoft. Same guy who developed the luciferase microneedle. Do you see this coming into clear picture yet, guys? Clear focus yet? 666, Lucifer. And we always wondered why it was like the name or the number of the name, the number of a man. He looked, there's all one guy behind all this. Do I think it's Bill Gates? Absolutely not. I think Antichrist is going to destroy him as soon as he gets into power and the false prophet. Read the Bible. Pope's not in charge either. He kills the Pope. He uproots three horns, right? Nobody, he doesn't share his glory. Neither does God, right? Satan always copies everything God does. God doesn't share his glory. Don't expect Satan to either. But it's so interesting to see all this on the horizon now. Next article, please. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. And that's exactly what we see today. When we look around the world, and everybody's just going about their daily lives. And Jesus is about to open up the sky. And so what do I think? I think you guys should be living on fire lives for Jesus Christ. Because I don't think we got 30, 40, 50 years. I'd be terribly surprised if we even had 10 years the way this is going. It's going into overdrive right now. And wait till we cover the technology stuff. Next article, please. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. And the Holy Spirit, speaking through Paul, says, But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write you, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, because they're making peace with the Arabs and everybody around them right now, then sudden destruction comes upon you? No, them. And you're not here. Notice it doesn't say us. It says them. We're not here. As labor pains, oh, upon a pregnant woman. And they, not you, they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. And that's exactly what we need to be doing, church. We need to be watching so that we know how to live our lives, living our lives in light of eternity. Because I tell you what, guys, Jesus is coming again soon. And his reward is with him. And he's going to judge the living and the dead. And the whole world can rage and shake their fist at God. And the whole church can sleep and hit the snooze button all they want. But it's not going to matter because Jesus doesn't care. He's just going to open up the sky and be like, all right, put your pencils down and turn over your paper. 
So I hope this encourages you guys to live in light of eternity because Jesus is coming again soon. And this is only one half of the equation. We didn't have enough time. So next Wednesday, we'll go over all the technological aspects, which I believe are what I would like to refer to as limiting factors. Limiting factors. And so we'll go over that next time and we'll cover the technological side of this equation. So I hope this blesses you guys and I hope you guys can, hope it's useful. I'm planning on sending it to some of my friends who I've talked to and you know, a thousand years, I think we got, you know, 40, 50 years or something. If we do, it's because there's going to be like a nuclear war and like a Carrington solar flare and like a mega virus that basically if, if it's like that, that would mean all this got developed and then hit the pause button. That could happen, right? But it would have to happen in such a painful way that God eventually, it would be like God hitting the pause button. And the only way he could do that in the, that I can think of would be like through a mass depopulation event. And then out of that, a new society could come. So God could, but that doesn't fit then with the model of a birth. Because births don't just stop, right? When it starts, Jesus says the generation that sees this begin will see it all. It's, it's going to be all in this generation. We'll actually cover that article next week. So I don't think it's going to get rolled back, guys. And frankly, I don't know why we would hope that. Shouldn't our hope be in Jesus Christ? Is our hope in this world? You know, I talk to a lot of young people. I talk to a lot of old people, you know, they're close to retirement or about to fully vest their IRA or, you know, they're about to have a baby or they're going to see their grandkids and they want a little more time. I get that. My wife's pregnant. I have a great life. I love my family. But the greatest things in this world don't compare to Jesus Christ, guys. He's the lover of our souls. And all this stuff we have in this life, it's cool. You know, there's good in this world, but it doesn't compare to Jesus Christ, right? Let's pray. Father God, we love you so much, and we're so thankful that you warn us in your word about all of these things that when we look at them from a distance, from afar off, Lord, they don't make much sense. But like you tell us in Daniel, it's for the time of the end. And Lord, now we see all these things coming into focus. So, Lord, help us not to be nervous, not to be afraid. You haven't given us a spirit of fear. Lord, help us to be bold. Help us to be on fire for you. Lord, help us not to worry about this stuff, but help us to worry about what we're going to be doing when you come back, using our time wisely, Lord. So, Lord, we pray that you would give us opportunities to share the good news of your soon return, the good news of you dying on the cross to pay for our sins, with as many people as we can. Bring people into our lives, whether it be at work or at the grocery store, Lord, wherever we are, just use us. Help us to occupy till you come. Help us to be about your business and help us to be found so doing when you return. We love you, we praise you, we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen.